Hey everybody. <clears throat> so this is uh, um, a day that I was looking forward to uh, for a couple of weeks now. Uh, I'm going to discuss a really exciting topic, and I mean that somewhat sarcastically. Um, after I posted the constant speed prop video, someone uh, asked a good question. Um, they, they left a question that was, uh, how do you lean a constant speed prop? Uh, is it similar to a fixed pitch prop? And the general answer is, yeah, it's pretty similar. The, the big difference is, obviously, that you can't go by RPM. Uh, if you were looking at a, a change in RPM and a fixed prop, uh, fixed pitch prop, then it's going to be different seeing that RPM is held constant um, automatically in a constant speed prop. But other than that, it, it's very similar. So um, I responded to him um, telling him that, you know, it's, it's great if you have an EGT, which, which I do, um, you could use that. Uh, that's probably the most accurate way. Um, other than that, you can uh, just feel for roughness and then uh, enrich in as well. Um, I was going to demonstrate it today uh, in flight. And really what I'm going to focus on is demonstrating how I do it. Um, so I want to have that disclaimer out there. I mean, I, I'm not going to, don't, you know, take this as gospel, but um, this, this is how I do it. And I'm not going to get into the age-old um, argument of how much lean a peak and if it's dangerous or how much rich a peak. And um, I will generally fly a little lean of peak, um, but that's how I do it. Uh, if you're interested, I would suggest looking up the John Deacon articles um, on the internet. Uh, he does one called Mixture Magic, which goes into a lot of detail about uh, fallacies of um, running lean of peak and and so forth and, and what's best for the engine. So I'll talk a little bit about how I do it and uh, if you want more information uh, look up the John Deacon articles. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started up and uh, we'll uh, take off and I'll start from there. Thanks. So Cedar Rapids is at 860 feet above sea level so you see I went full rich for the takeoff which is standard operating procedure. I also noticed that the external microphone not completely plugged in at this point, so uh, please excuse the fact that I had to go back and dub the audio in. So here's a little tip if you're going to be climbing uh, for a while, let's say you're going to be cruising at 7,000, 9,000 feet, something like that. Um, in, that. in those cases, the question comes up, how do you lean during takeoff? And uh, you'll notice here is that I adjusted the marker on the EGT gauge to whatever the EGT was just after takeoff with a full rich uh, mixture uh, on a relatively low uh, airport altitude. And as I climb, if I'm climbing for a while, I can adjust the mixture, I can lean the mixture slowly as I climb to maintain the EGT uh, that I had shortly after takeoff. All that's doing is it's keeping the mixture about the same as it was on takeoff where I had a full rich mixture, which you shouldn't have to be richer than that uh, to keep the engine cool and maintain uh, max power. And obviously as you climb, if you didn't adjust the mixture, you would, you would be getting very rich. So this is just a little tip if you're gonna be climbing for a while. So while I'm climbing, let's start talking about how I lean the mixture when I reach cruising altitude. When you're doing your initial flight training, a lot of people hear from their instructor, lean to 50 degrees rich of peak, and that's great. 
and then when you do your complex training a lot of people here for 75 percent power run 25 inches of manifold pressure 2500 rpm and you're great and that's actually not very good advice and if you refer to the john deacon mixture magic article that i referenced earlier you can find a lot of good information about why that is a bad thing here is a plot from that article and uh, it's pulled out of an io 550 um, manual and what it shows is for 25 inches of manifold pressure 2500 rpm which is a roughly 75 percent power setting you see peak egt egt at the top there and then you see 50 degrees approximately rich of peak EGT is peak cylinder head temperature and that in this plot is about 430 degrees. Really you want to stay below 400 degrees cylinder head temperature for to maximize your engine life and um, not abuse the cylinder. So that's why there's that red box uh, that he drew there. And you could look even at peak EGT you're better, you're still over 400 degrees, but it's better than 50 degrees rich in peak. So when people start leaning to 50 degrees rich of peak, thinking they're not hurting anything, they're actually setting their mixture at the worst possible setting for cylinder head temperature, uh, assuming you're at high power settings. As you back off on power settings, it doesn't really matter, but at 75% power, it's definitely a problem. So here I've reached my cruising altitude. So I'm pulling back my throttle as we discussed in the previous video and I'm adjusting my prop RPM. And I typically fly at 24 inches of manifold pressure and the 2300 RPM uh, recommended cruise RPM for this prop. So the throttle and the RPM are set. So you'll see I start to lean the mixture here. And you can see the EGT needle climbing as I lean it. You can also watch the fuel flow to the left of that uh, going down as I lean. It's pretty significant fuel savings. And here, as the needle kind of starts to slow, and I reach peak EGT and then go start going lean, I actually felt a significant deceleration here and a little bit of a stumble. And, and so then I enriched it slightly from there. And, and that's where the feel method also plays into it. It's kind of like you're fine tuning. Um, and, and that's generally what I do. And at that point, you're probably on this plane about 10 degrees lean of peak, something like that. And let's go back to that plot. If I'm 10 degrees or so lean of peak, and you follow that down to cylinder head temperature, I'm around 400 or less on the cylinder head temperature. And that's if I was using uh, a full power or a 75% power setting of 25 inches. 2500 RPM. Like I said, I'm using 24 and 2300. So I'm at a lower power setting. So I'm definitely below 400 degrees. Um, and, and I'm flying uh, economically and cleaner and uh, cooler. And, and as far as how much fuel you save, it could be pretty significant. Um, in, in my aero, it's probably one and a half gallons per hour. Um, better than if I was doing, say, 50 degrees rich of peak. Speaking of fuel, let's look back at the, the uh, fuel flow gauge here as I leaned in. And you can see that it ends up somewhere less than 9 gallons per hour. And that's important because I know that about my plane now. And so next time, if I want to lean quickly, I can pull back that lever fairly fast and watch the fuel flow. Uh, until I hit 9 or slightly less than 9 gallons uh, per hour. And I know that that's my uh, slightly lean of peak fuel setting. So that's another technique that uh, I, I use. So there you have it, a, a somewhat more uh, dragged out uh, explanation of how I lean than what I first expected. But I, I think it was pretty thorough. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, let me know. Uh, hopefully you found this video interesting and useful. Um, until next time, 
Uh, and if you get a chance, I strongly recommend John Deacon, Mixture Magic, as well as his other articles. Very informative. Thanks.